Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and we are back from the Bar Z Summer Bash and uh, getting back on the lathe to get that project set up. Alright, so we're back. We're back on wrapping things up with the lathe. Um, Sorry about the background noise. Uh, it may not be anywhere near as hot here in North Carolina as it was uh, in California, but it's at 90% humidity, so it's you're sweating and sitting still. But anyways, uh, yeah. So where are we with this? Let's let's take let's take stock of where we are so far. We got the lay itself put together. Um, I've got the automatic tool changer. Um, it is in place, but it's not fully installed yet. Um, the only thing that's missing at this point is just getting it uh, dialed in. So it's fully functional. So the, the uh, tool changer is ready to go. Um, we now have the automatic oiler in from Tormach that had been uh, back ordered. So we've got that actually, it's right here. So get ready to get this thing set up. We made the bracket for the collet closer, or the pneumatic attachment for the collet closer. Uh, so that was in the last couple of videos, right? Um, and that you know, test fit is, is on. Actually, let's see if I can just move you so you can see it. So, there we go. So we did our test fit. It, 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 everything about it lines up perfectly, right? So the only thing left to do is, uh, I just need to tap all the holes. Uh, that won't, won't take long at all to do the tapping. Um, I'm gonna hand tap those. I'll probably just use a drill. I'll just knock that out real quick. So these are here, and uh, so what goes on here is the air regulator and solenoid uh, pieces. That wiring goes up underneath and over to the back of the controller so that it can automatically engage and disengage the collar closer. And then we have to install the, the collet closer. So all of those things are still left to do before we're actually making parts on here. I kind of hoped that the uh, you know the, the CNC ferry was going to stop by and do this stuff while I was gone, but I guess not. So uh, that's where we are right now. Um, I don't know how interesting that content would be for you guys to watch. Uh, so and it's kind of a cramped area. I'll be working behind the machine. I don't have a lot of room the camera and might try and shoot some footage there I might not uh, frankly I'm just wiped out we're halfway through this week and I'm still you know, absolutely wiped out from, from the bash so I'm, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna put, gonna put on camera or not but uh, with that let me, let me wrap this part of it up and we'll, we'll go from there all right well for those of you who aren't familiar with the uh, Stan's little bar chart about to first flow chart about whether you should make a video or not. The, one of the very first things on there is does a video already exist? And guess what? You can't find a video on installing this uh, um, automatic oiler for the slant bed lathe for the Tormach. So um, I will indeed do a video. So um, this is what the oiler itself looks like. It comes in a couple, couple of uh, packages. Um, as you can see, you know it's the Changying, Changying uh, branded. Nothing terribly fancy about this thing, right? You've got your fill, your fill tube with a filter in there, right? We've got our line out with the pressure gauge on here. You can see from the back, there's the pump, right? And fuse, and for our wiring. So the, the first step that it says is to take this cover off here, and you get some wire with it. You get what appears to be some protective cover for, for oil lines. And you get some oil lines. Uh, some zip ties different various connectors. Some of the stuff that's in here is from 
other parts of the install. So, but that's that's the basics of it. So I'm gonna bring you back when uh, when I've got this ready to go. So basically, it's a matter of you know we need to open this up, strip back some wire, insert it, wire it up per our wiring diagram, and um, we'll go from there. All right, so according to the directions, they wanted us to strip back two inches of the insulation, and then a quarter inch of the insulation on each of the wires. And then we're gonna insert that through this locking connector and into the control area. So let's, let's do that now. See how well we can do this without fraying our wires. I thought about tinning the wires, um, but I'll put it against that. All right, so I want to make sure that I've got enough room to get my wires into the block without having a whole bunch of extra stuff. Right? All right, let's lock this in place. All right, so we're good. Uh, I'll bring you back in a minute. Let's take a look at the directions here real quick. Um, as you can see on our controller here, it shows ground, white, and black. Pretty straightforward, right? Um, not terribly difficult work. So for those of you who wouldn't do this sort of thing because you're, I don't know, like me, and colorblind, uh, really isn't too bad. Right? Sometimes you have to get over it and learn to read. So there's our ground. There's our white wire. Stan will probably give me a hard time for not putting the special dissimilar metals. Alright. Oops. He puts that gel on there to keep things from corroding. I probably should. I don't know if they're dissimilar metals or not. But we can typically assume that they are in this case. Because they're not copper, they're probably not copper, they're probably plated in zinc something or other, right? So, alright. Our wiring now matches the wiring diagram on here, or on the, uh, the directions. I think I might do this uh, just here. This is one of these where I prefer not to have things resting on other areas, just out of habit. All right, four screws button this up. It does have a kind of like a cardboard uh, gasket, but let's get this button back up. This part of it buttoned up, and I'll bring you back in a minute. Okay, I skipped ahead a little bit, and uh, just want to show you. So I got the oiler mounted. I haven't done anything else really, so. Oh, there's mounted, it's just two, two bolts, right? Um, the directions, when you get this oiler, it's the same oiler that's on the 1100. Um, so it actually tells you to skip ahead. Make sure you're following the right directions. Otherwise, you're gonna be really confused, but I figure you guys are smart enough to figure that one out on your own. Um, went ahead, got the oil line uh, put in place. So that's a two-piece part, right? So there's a little round um, cylinder that this goes through, and then the ferrule that locks it in place, right? Um, so pretty pretty straightforward with that. Uh, the next step, really, I want to slide this guard in place and work on that a little bit. But um, now we just start running lines, right? So we'll, we'll zip tie the lines together. Um, I waited to do this. Um, we need to do that same thing with the power line as well, right? So we'll, we'll run all of these together. Uh, I think I gotta look at this one. I'm gonna double check what the the directions say. Uh, 
the directions might have it going through here. It doesn't make any sense to me why you do one and not the other. Uh, but uh, so let me double check that, check lengths, and then it's just zip tying things in place. Now this line, um, right, we're gonna have to go back into the controller uh, again and uh, do your power and ground in the controller. So we gotta open that thing up again as well. So um, I'm gonna do this part off camera and I'll, I'll bring it right back. Oh. Yeah, old guy with a broken back. Okay, so I've got the lines routed around the back side. Now we're at the, the uh, headstock spindle side of the, uh, of the lathe. Um, they send you an awful lot of oil line. You don't need it all, right? So basically, um, the existing oil line is designed to be threaded through the machine and to the front. Like this line would go all the way to the front with the manual boiler. Um, why they have us doing it this way, I don't really know. But basically, uh, my guess is is that it's a little too short. So they give us they give you a coupler. Right, it comes out, you've got a coupler, it looks like this, and it's got two sides on it with the exact same thing. Right? I'll zoom in here uh, so you guys can get a better view. So hang on just a second, let me shift the camera. Right, so we're kind of on a close up of where I'm going to be working here. Um, might need to zoom out just a little bit, but this will give you an idea. So the coupler right, has this tiny uh, I gotta make sure I'm still staying in frame. It's got this tiny round little cylinder, and then the nut that's used to hold it and lock it in place. So it, it basically forms a little seal here and crimps it and locks it, locks the uh, tube in place. On the line that came uh, with the machine already in place, it's got all that built in, right? So it's got the uh, the locks already there. You just tighten this. Uh, into it and you're ready to go. Right. So basically, screw this in place. This end is done, right? We just need to tighten it. Now for the other end, when we take that out, you'll see that it's got those same two pieces. Uh, it reflexes. Because it is round, it's going to want to roll away everywhere. So we put this on, let me zoom out just a hair. So you gotta make sure you put this on in the right order, right? So you put the nut on the end, put the, I'm sure this has a proper name, but put the, the crimping of washer, the seal part on the tube, and then just tighten it up, put it together. And when, when all of this is tight, that should form a leak-proof coupling. Okay, that's it for that part. Mm -hmm.